Okay, um, this is my picture. So we're going to talk about Kilauea, although I'm going to talk about the Big Island in general. <clears throat> so, and, and a lot of you probably wonder why Hawaii is called Hawaii. It should be Hawaii. And, and this island is also called Hawaii. And they're now starting to call this Hawaii Island to get it separated. Although all of us that grew up there will call this Big Island until we die. Anyway, the two, uh, I brought my pointer just for us for the purpose. Um, the two active volcanoes are Mauna Loa and Kilauea. They're the youngest and the most active. It's made up of, we've got three more. Kohala is the oldest. Mauna Kea hasn't erupted in 4,500 years. Still considered active? I'm not sure. <laughs> Kohalai is considered active, but it hasn't erupted in hundreds of years. But these guys go up all the time. And Kilauea is the most active. So we're going to talk mostly about Kilauea. <clears throat> I've been reading, I'm reading now a book. It's really interesting. It's called Exalted Sits the Chief. And it's the story of ancient Hawaiian, but by written by a guy that's an archaeologist, geologist, and it's really interesting because he looks at all the evidence, he looks at oral histories, he looks at archaeology, he looks at the geology, and he's trying to put it all together. <clears throat> so why are there volcanoes in Hawaii? Well, see this long row? Hawaii sits over a hot spot. There's a hot spot in the crust of the, of the bottom of the ocean. And it's been putting up islands for a very long time. So that's why the farther west and north islands in the island chain are very extinct. They're not active at all. That's why Hawaii is the most active. And there's a little guy off here called Loihi. And if you wait like 800 years, you can probably buy some real estate there. <laughs> So it's still active. And as you'll see, this eruption of 2018 added 350 acres to the Big Island. So <clears throat> the, the eight islands of Hawaii are in here. And then this area is called French Brigade Shoals. And then this is called the Emperor Seamounts. So the Emperor Seamounts are all underwater. French Brigade Shoals, most of them are almost underwater. The only people who live on French frigates old is some Coast Guard stations. People have to go out there and stay for a while. Not a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, so this shows you this hot spot and the activity that comes into Mauna Loa and Kilauea. And Mauna Loa uh, just recently erupted uh, last fall. It, and it went down, it covered the road going up to Mauna Loa, but it never got to the main highway. The main highway that connects both sides of the islands called Saddle Road. And it's a really, it's the best highway on the island. It's actually double laned in good portion, but it didn't get to that highway. Um, there have been eruptions of Mauna Loa, and what I'll show you the, the, the eruptions. Um, they go towards Kona, they go towards Hilo, they go down to the east, they go all over the place. So we live on the side of Mauna Loa. Shouldn't we be worried? Well, as I'll show you, we're in a little pocket which is protected by topography. Lava, fortunately, goes downhill in this little area that we live in is a ride. Anyway, so Kilauea, Mauna Loa, you can see they're connected and uh, <clears throat> that's where the activity is. So this is an important map. This is prior to 2018. Okay, so if you, if you went to view the volcano, 
you ended up <clears throat> here in uh, the visitor center. And there was also next to it some buildings called the, that's the Hawaii Volcano Observatory. Um, both of those buildings are no longer habitable <clears throat> after the 2018 eruption. Um, this is the Kilauea military camp. So past that. There is this thing called Holy Mo'o Crater. And that's what you would see when you went there. Mostly what you see coming out of the crater was not lava, it was hot gases that you would see coming out of there. And so the, the eruption was taking place deeper down. When I was a kid, you could come right up to the edge of this thing and look at it. And they, and they made a wooden ramp you could walk out on. Um, the <laughs> ranger once, when Dora and I were there, showed you the burned up ramp. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> this road, this crater rim drive, the red part means that's all closed. You cannot drive there anymore. Um, and, I'll, and I'll tell you, the way that you got to see it when it's now in this big area, because what happened after 2018, the caldera just collapsed and collapsed. And this thing that was, you know, 180 meters across became 2,000 meters across. Yeah. So when you wanted to go view it, like that picture that started this presentation, you would drive down this crater rim drive, park somewhere about here, walk down this road and then the park guys made a little path that you'd go down and you could view the lava. Our house is, it says Monolo Estates, there's two. We're in oh, what's called Ohia Estates and there are these two roads and this one keeps going. Our house is somewhere right about there. Well, yeah, before, before it really, really was just a spot for Ohia. This is the volcano village. Like I said, there's really no center of town. There's a mom and pop store and there's a couple little cafes and it's kind of cute. There's a Kilway Lodge. If you want to go there and stay in a hotel, the volcano house, which is a former private residence turned into a hotel, has 20 rooms. There are 380 or 400 night or whatever. Kilauea Lodge, which is in town, has 13 cabins. I don't know, they're 300 or something like that. Or you can rent our houses. So we're part of this uh, short term vacation rental stuff with that in under the wire. <laughs> so, uh, so where's your protection? You said you had a big rock or something. To pardon? You. you said the topology protects. I'll show you in a minute. Okay. It's coming up. Uh, this Kilauea Iki was another little eruption that took place in the 50s. I remember when I was a kid and this, this thing happened. I didn't get to really see any lava as a kid. I'd get the fog, you know, we get this fog, this volcano fog. I, we knew it, it was erupting. My dad, who sold groceries to the outside islands, his, the planes would go and zoom over the, the, the volcano, so he got to see it. I didn't get to see it. So when my folks had their 50th wedding anniversary, which was 1983, which is when the Pu'u'u'u eruption had started. It started in January. We were there in March. Um, we went down to the end of the chain of craters drive, which was right down in the water. And you could see the steam coming out of the water. There was only one guy there. And there was a rope that said, don't go beyond this point. I looked at my family and I said, I'm going. <laughs> you know, your daughter said, you're setting a bad example. I don't care. So we got out there and we could see the lava going into the water. There were like a couple hundred people out there anyway. But later, the next week, I'm driving around Honolulu and I heard that this whole bench that we'd been standing on had fallen into the ocean, but it did it at night, so it didn't, didn't harm anybody. Um, okay, so uh, 
This is what you would see prior to 2018. You came and you see, you can see the smoke and, and you would see the hot gases coming out. And uh, <clears throat> I, I would go there at nighttime. Mm. You know, if it was clear at our house, stood a good chance of being clear at the park. And I would rush into the park and my tripod and my camera and I had to, you had to make a weight to hold it down because the wind was always blowing like crazy, you know, blow your tripod around. So, uh, but I mean, I, none of mine were ever as good as the ones I would see in the shop. <laughs> Where they, and, and, I, and I realized that those guys, they superimposed multiple pictures. You know, they got good pictures of the Milky Way and they stuck it in, put it on top. <laughs> But anyway, I, I took a bunch of these. Try okay, this is very instructive. Um, here's the Kilauea caldera that you would see prior to 2018 with this little little hole in the little cooper that's called a mountain mountain. And uh, <clears throat> this is here, Pu'o'o. -O. So this was erupting for 35 years. It did from 83 and it and just really stopped with the 2018 eruption. So here's the town of Volcano, which is really spread in this way and a little in this way. <laughs> town of Glenwood. There's a there used to be a trail um, created by the uh, civil defense guys. And I've hiked it with my best friend to Pu'o, but it's a good 10 miles each way. So, and he was always out hiking and he had cancer. So he passed away already. But it was a good 10 mile hike. Um, anyway, so this is Kalapana. And you'll see that this is a place that got overrun early. This place, Pahoa. This is Highway 130, comes down and turns this way. Um, number of Pu'o'o eruptions headed for Pahoa and didn't and stopped there. So one, one stop, they don't have garbage dumps there. They have what they call transfer stations where you go and you throw all your garbage and then they have a truck that takes it down. That probably takes it on the barge to go dump in the ocean. For <laughs> but... <laughs> This stopped at the transfer station. The fence around the transfer station had lava coming through it, and then it stopped. I don't know how that, but it was interesting because they put put these concrete barriers around all the telephone poles. Okay. Anyway, this one shows you all of these. Uh, various lava flows going back into the 1700s. So, you know, somebody's gone back and researched all those records. So here's the lava flow hazard zone. You see the zone of five that's right in here. And that's where we live. Zone five is that's by topography. And I'll show you another one. But <laughs> so all of these flows, these are basically flows from Kilauea. Doesn't show all of the Mauna Loa flows. Those would be flows going this way, this way, a lot of different areas. So this shows you the <clears throat> lava risk, low number, high risk. And we're in number five. So we're lucky. Well, we're actually not lucky. My brother, who was the first one that wanted to buy property up there, my brother lives in Hawaii. He picked it out because he knew it was in that area. And he wanted to buy the back lot and he wanted me to buy the front lot. So I bought the front lot and I bought, I bought a back lot, we dropped, switched, and then I bought another. We bought another front back. We, we only own six lots. Okay, one of the first things we did, this was in 2013 when we spent six months on the big island. 
we hiked down there. Uh, the civil defense didn't want you to hiking down there, but they didn't come out till two o'clock. So if you're willing to hike in the morning, it's not a problem. I would tell you that was a while ago when I was a lot stronger then than I am now. I was so exhausted. It was a good thing my oldest son was with us because the last hundred yards or so he had to help me. <laughs> I was about ready to and, and Dora had to go get the car, right? How yeah. oh, how long the hike was it? Uh well, we actually got we we didn't go straight there. We went sort of an L and it was three or four hours. And what's the altitude change? Oh, we're at sea level. You see it. You're at, yeah, yeah, the, whole, step the whole thing's at sea level. <laughs> Where our house is is at 4,000 feet. Huh? But that's a colored picture, and you just see the, the bed of the lava then, right? I mean, it, well, you, initially, you I thought it was a black and white. The lava coming down here, yeah. But this is all coming out of Ooh, oh, 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 when it was going. Mm -hmm. So now you wouldn't see this. Um, you can see other people walking around up there. But these pictures are taken from the boat. This was their old one. This was called Lava Kai One. And um, I got to know the, the guy that ran it. And uh, <laughs> they had a really cool system. They pull this up into the park. Into Isaac Hall. Hale Beach Park, and then they put up a ladder, and he climbed up the ladder and got on the boat, and then they'd go and launch the boat in at the boat ramp, and then go out, and then go back and unload in the same way. They wouldn't, they wouldn't get on the boat with the boat in the water. So here's pictures, I, and I got hundreds of them, so I just picked out a few. <laughs> And I was hoping Mike Lainer would be here because I got one of his in there. This was, as I said, a big piece that broke off right while we were sitting there. And Shane, the captain of the boat, he he try he would get you in clubs, and uh, so you could watch this thing break off. Um, this is back in the park, and I call this one my burning bush. No, no. You don't know over it. <laughs> so this is one of Mike Leitner's. He took a lot. I, I convinced him he was going to go somewhere else, but I said, no, you got to go back to the big island. Go out of the boat. And he did it. He's always been grateful for that. <laughs> He's quite the photographer. Okay, so here's the bigger boat. It had four motors now. So and you can take a lot of people on this thing. They have the same uh, <clears throat> old people ever. But they got a little too close for comfort. <laughs> <laughs> this lava bomb comes through the roof, landed right in the middle of a bunch of people. What? Four people seriously injured in the hospital. One lady almost lost her leg. Sued him, both gone. It was sitting in Hilo for a long time, but it's gone now. So this lava bomb was hot rocks? Yeah, what, the lava bomb was a hot rock. What happens is the stuff under the water explodes yeah. and then the rocks all come out. And one of the big rocks came right through the roof of this boat. Now, the roof's just a little bit of tin, you know, mm -hmm. not, not, nothing substantial. It's not going to stop it. Either. But it like, comes from the water, not from the, the volcano. Right, it comes from the water. Yeah. It does, it's not, not straight out of the running down the hill or anything. It's, it's under the water. It, the explosion is because of the steam exploding. And then boom, it goes out in one time. The so he's not able to get a release. Yeah, so you get an explosive uh, 
appearance of the steam and that launches the rock. Right. So he was too close to it. <laughs> He's famous for doing that, though. So this is prior to 2018. So here's the Honolulu crater, this little hole in the middle of this big caldera. There's a neat height when you can go down into the caldera. It's a height that starts right behind the volcano house, this hotel. It looks like people have done it. And there's all kinds of Pelly's hair all over the place. Pelly's hair are little fine strands of silica that happen when the volcano is erupting, you know, and when it's, you know, very, very <clears throat> violent. And uh, I know the first time we found it, we were hiking off the Devitt Station Trail. We were not we were where we weren't supposed to be. My wife says, there's a piece of wire here. Who's leaving wire on here? I don't think there's any wire here. It was Pelly's hair. And she's really good. I mean, she could she could spot it in places we never thought you'd see any. But yeah, get to the bottom of the caldera and there's Pelly's hair all over the place. So here is showing you all the different pieces of lava that came out of Halimaumau for different years. Now we have never seen it <coughs> overflow its bank, but last night you were saying you saw that. I mean, yes. you know, some people have been lucky. This thing has come up and then overflowed its banks. Only lasts like a day or so, and then it then it stops. I'm going to show you a movie about what happened between this and 2018. Right, you went from this to this huge pit, this giant pit. So now, if you go and see it, you don't you don't see this thing anymore. You see this huge pit, and the interesting thing is the pit originally filled with water and that's never happened before so they filled it filled with water in the bottom then when the 2018 thing happened well after it ha happened it finally dried up so did the water that water cause those uh, explosions again of the rocks it didn't do anything really it it just sat there and Finally went away. I uh, I taught at the University of Hawaii Hilo for the only remote sensor they had there, and he flies UAVs, so he was flying UAVs over the crater and measuring the water water level. And then the volcano observatory guys got they built up their own UAVs and they were flying copters around. Okay, so these are. And, and I thought this was kind of a weird chronology, but these are just all things that happen. So, ooh, oh, oh, the erupted vent collapses, but the magma starts flowing downhill towards uh, the lower east rift zone, which is where this Leilani Estates was. Okay, so <clears throat> it's Basically, this is the end of the eruption that started in 1983. Holly the lava lake starts to drop and it dropped way down there. They fly helicopters over there so they can monitor it. Then the first ground cracks open in the lower rift zone and in this Leilani State subdivision. And you'll see that in the movie. Then these <clears throat> things, um, you see more fissures. They got up to 20, I can't remember if it, it's in the movie. And uh, <clears throat> then there was issues of notice of potential explosions at the summit of Kilauea. Well, the explosions were ash. They had ash as the stuff fluffed, fluffed in, sloughed in then it would get the hot and this ash would blow out. Fortunately for us, the winds all go southwest. 
So they were all blowed down to Ka'u and we left pretty much un unexposed. You don't get any at all, or do you get? Did we more? get? Um, we had a little bit. We we weren't there. My contractor got a couple of his boys to go and put um, big plastic over our water tank. We have to catch our water there. We're at four thousand feet, and nobody's going to drill a well down four thousand feet. So <laughs> it might hit a hot spot too. <laughs> I don't know, but. Uh, so everybody is on what they call catchment. We have a 10,000 gallon tank. Well, in the big house, we have a 14,000, 10,000 gallon tank in the cottage and 14 in the big one. And that's where you get your water. And, but we, we filter it and it's got a charcoal filter, a cloth filter, and then a UV light, which kills all the bugs. And, you know, basically, you don't know that there's a difference. So uh, this, and I'll show you what happened in this big crater. There's a little pit that opens. Um, this Fisher 8, that's down in the Leilani Estate. And it became the main event in this Leilani Estate area. But the lava out of Fisher 8 started to flow towards what's known as Kapoho Bay. And that used to be our favorite skin diving spot. It's a, <laughs> an area where the lava flow had formed a barrier reef. Mm. And so you had all these pockets where you could go skin diving and the fish were just beautiful. And everybody really loved the place. Um, it's gone. So it's all, but this whole thing quit. So this is, the effects of the 2018 eruption. So <laughs> here it went down, and Pohiki is where the boat would go in when we would go see the lava from Buo, and we'd have to come all the way back up to where the lava was coming down the hill. Um, but when it did float into Kapo, it, it flowed both <clears throat> um, north and south, filling in this thing, building this huge creek delta. And, I, and I'll show you what a road looks like in my line of state that day. So here it is flowing into Kapoho Bay. This is Kapoho Bay. A lot of homes, a lot of nice homes. They, these are you know, nice pole houses and stuff, really. I mean, people spent a lot of money on these houses. They're, they're not dumps. And they're not. So in that, in that picture, where did the lava come from? Pardon? In that picture, where was the source of the lava? That came out of the vents in Leilani Estate. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was all, local, uh, local vents. Yeah, they all came down. To, this is this area right here. Mm -hmm. That's that area. It was uh, called vacation land. <laughs> Other, you know, <laughs> the developers have that. a habit to go put a stake in the lava, you know, beautiful estates or whatever. It's a pile of lava. But <laughs> anyway, this was, and, and we had good friends that lost their house. This is a road from Leilani Estates. So <laughs> that's an eight foot wall of lava. <laughs> okay, this is a really. You're going to have to be quiet because I have to use these speakers. Speaker volume is way over there on the right. Yeah, I don't know what is called one of the most active volcanoes in the world. 
in March 2018, Kilauea volcano erupting in two places at the summit since 2008. This stuff is going into the ocean. In mid March, USGS scientists observed the increased pressure of the magma system beneath Blue Oil. This caused the crater floor of Blue Oil to rise. At the same time, Kilauea Summit also went through a period of increased inflation. On April 26, the lava lake overflowed onto the Alabama crater floor at the summit. On April 30th, the crater floor of Pulu collapsed. Later, scientists determined this ended the 35 year Pulu eruption. Two days after the collapse of Pulu the summit lava lake. Collapse of the Uoho, a series of earthquakes indicated that magma was moving in the middle of that lower eastern zone. On May 3rd, 2018, the first fissure opened along the lower east rift zone, a residential subdivision of Leilani Estates. Between May 3rd and May 6th, and fissures open to the lower east river thing. That's right, again, your backyard. <laughs> Pardon me, Chief. So, what is it that causes the magma chamber pressure to increase? How do they know? Well, 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 how do they know? But what, what is the source of the increase in pressure? Oh, it's flowing from somewhere else, flowing into that, into the you know, chamber. This has all come down from Buro and, and the summit, all from Kilauea. Everything came down here. It had to go somewhere. I mean, what? How? Lava flows moves toward the ocean to the southeast. So it looks like there's action everywhere. There was a guy in here who had a vacation thing in there. It finally got run over. Northeast toward Kapolo Bay. Yeah, that's Kapolo Bay up there. Wow, that's quite a lava fountain. The whole day, and this is a great diving in there. Over the next two months, lava from Fisher 8 continued to flow towards the ocean, creating a large lava delta. This delta and other ocean entries added 875 acres of new land to the island of Hawaii. Well, I proclaimed it yet. <laughs> There's some debate about who owns it, you know. As the summit subsided and adjusted to withdrawal of magma, powerful collapse events felt as earthquakes grew more frequent. Collapse events occurred as magma drained from the summit reservoir to the new eruption. And gas was trapped beneath the surface by rock fall debris. This caused the ground above to become less supported and stressed. On average, every 28 hours, the ground at the summit collapsed. In May, these collapse events were often accompanied by plumes of ash. 
And that's why you're going away from our truth of the earth floor began to drop it in the clouds. Dramatically changing the southern landscape throughout June and July. May through August, over 60,000 earthquakes throughout the summer, 62 major collapses in the region. As a result, the depths of Halimau Mau Crater increased from 280 feet to approximately 1,600 feet at the diameter of more than 12. There are new eruptions right over there. Finally, August, the volume of lava erupting from Fissure 8 began to decrease. The number of quakes at the southern region of the region of the region. After months of no activity, scientists determined the eruption was over. Lava flows covered 13.7 square miles of land. Over 700 homes were destroyed and approximately 2,000 people were displaced. Please be respectful as you explore the park and the island of Hawaii. Use only open trails and roads. Stay out of the closed areas. So, Dora, this guy is putting her son. Met him over in Harvey. So um, when you talk about lava in Hawaii, there's two words that are used. One's called a'a, and a'a is just a big mass of nasty lava, huge, big mass, and it's just slowly coming, and it eats everything in its path. So that's a'a lava. The other is called hoi hoi. And boy, boy, is the stuff that gives rise to these things that look like ropes. It's lava flowing. You could see the lava flowing as it went to the ocean. That's all for hoi, hoi. This is my video. Um, it started in 20, September um, 2021. September 26th. And the voices you hear are my wife and some friends of ours that were visiting. Now, this is what the 300 millimeter telephone Yeah, I get that. And you're looking down into one of the craters. Pardon? You're looking down into. Yeah, we're looking down and mostly far away. They, they won't let you get real close, although our housekeeper went there at night. She got real close. Both camera tighter to the bowl. And then it's just a matter of holding the photo still. Did the air foul at this point or not? Pardon? Did the air foul? No, it's not really foul. It's a lot of steam. So it's a lot of steam. So um, that is the end. If the air is dangerous, they close the park. Oh, yeah. If there's silver dioxide coming your way, they close the park. And, and if it comes when you're in the visitor center watching movies, they chase you out. <laughs> They're not going to let it happen. And, and they've got, you know, bars that can stop you all the way along. So, uh, yeah, that, and that time that we hiked into the pool, oh, we couldn't go up and look in the crater because there was a lot of sulfur dioxide coming out of it. And I watched the helicopters when they came, they wouldn't, couldn't look over it because the sulfur dioxide was coming straight up. So I had to fly way out and around. <laughs> 
We did the helicopters once and decided that ain't for us. The boat was much better. <laughs> so I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Is there any loss of life in these eruptions? Do what? Any loss of life? Well, they apparently lost a few people that went out there and the bench collapsed when they were on it. Mm -hmm. um, I've only seen it added like one or two people. No, not a lot of like. Um, I don't know how many people you would subscribe to the bad air when the ash was going down into Co, but it can't be any worse than these stupid forest fire things we've had lately. <laughs> how much warning do you have that there's going to be an eruption? Uh, well, we would we went there September first of twenty twenty one. And the first thing I knew about it, I was out doing yard work, I think, and it was going off. <laughs> so, so it happens. A nanosecond. Yeah. I, by the time the information filters down to you, it's been going a while already. Yeah. And, <laughs> well, that was really fun. I, I got up really early in the morning, like four o'clock to hike in, went the wrong way. And then I came out and Zubnas were walking up out of the right way. So I didn't try it, but the next morning I went down the right way. But uh, they they got it all worked out. The rangers were all on top of it, you know, because people were, they, they feel responsible for it. But like I said, our housekeeper, she broke all the rules and went down close to it. Yeah. You have problems. What? The major, are there problems? Do you guys have problems with the major road closures just getting in and out or getting groceries? <laughs> are there not many roads closed? Or Highway 11, which is our yeah. you know our our route to Hilo and the groceries, yeah. has not been closed. Okay. So um, uh, Highway 130. They were kind of fearing that it would be closed, that one eruption that went down to Pohoa. Yeah. And if that had closed, that would have cut some people off. Right. And they were afraid that, well, and Leilani did. Leilani actually, you can see there were sort of two routes and left this area in between open. And there were a bunch of farms and stuff in there. And those people were carrying their, their produce out. <laughs> And, uh, but they got the government to get some bulldozers and bulldoze it through. Okay. Um, the biggest problem they had was Poviki, where we they would put the boat in to go see the lava. That's where a bunch of, there, there are subsistent fishermen on the big island. You wouldn't believe anybody could make a living catching fish, but they do. And they, you know, couldn't get in because the lava completely closed that boat ramp. Lava just drove, got washed down the coast and just filled that boat ramp. They couldn't get out. And so, oh man, they were hemming and hawing. They were going to put a boat ramp up from the beach. And then they were going to, these poor guys had to put their boats in in Hilo and go all the way around the south end of the island to their fishing area. A lot of gasoline. But finally, the, the government has rescinded. They're going to bust it open there in Pogiki. So the fishermen will have their rent back. Should have by now. But uh, yeah, that was, I mean, that was a big wall. <laughs> the only time that we, that our road was closed when we were there, one was an accident, but the other time was hurricane. The road did flood. So that was just for overnight when the rain was really bad. When it closed for the accidents, we ended up taking the back roads. <laughs> we were in a rental car and they're really not improved. <laughs> so uh, anything but the main roads are pretty bad. Fortunately, our, our, our street is paved. No, but a lot of the other roads are not. And uh, so, in the longer term, how long will it take this 
lava to break down and become fertile earth? Well, you know, it's like any of these other natural things. The only way you really get it to break down is let nature take its course. Well, that's what I'm asking. How yeah. long will nature take to take its Years. course? But it, but it's amazing. This area in Kalapana, which was run over in '93, somebody went out there and threw a bunch of coconuts, just a bunch of coconuts to the ground. And as we go back year after year, the coconuts have now sprouted and turned into trees. <laughs> you know, and and well, the ohia, which is our main tree, um, it it very rapidly takes root and, and grows in the lava. So you can see Ohia right after the eruption. So oh really? Yeah. Ohia so you're grow. you're later, you're saying or no, they they get the going right away. And it doesn't take very much for the Ohia to get going. Um but I was amazed at these coconuts. We can't grow coconuts up at our place. It's too, too high. <laughs> and uh Although our neighbor, he has had one. Ron Murphy has had one. But uh, yeah, I mean, and that's why that's why you're, there's a lot of places on the road to Kona that are developments, and they sell these, and they're just really chunk of lava. So you know, poor guys on the mainland buy them, and it's like when they, my dad. Bought a stupid piece of property in California. It was a piece of junk. But, you know, people think they, they're buying Hawaii and oh, you know, right? <laughs> but the area that we we live in is very lush. It's a, it's a rainforest. We live in a rainforest. And, uh, and that, anything will grow there. Everything grows there. But the lava is very rich and it breaks down into the black sand very quickly. They drive, they've got roads into to the um to where the boat launches. Some of you couldn't get into it at first. And they bulldozed it all and it turns into a black sand road. So yeah, they got, they've got one road. Yeah, you know, one road. All it is is a bunch of sticks poked in the lava. <laughs> and you drive over this thing with these sticks and from the lava, but yeah. And you have to get used to on the island. That island is nothing but two lane highways. The only one that isn't is the saddle road. And uh, so if you want to go fast and you're used to mainland driving, you're not going to really have it. You know, speed limit's 55 over there. And, and they're pretty good about it. I got a speed ticket on the way to Kona one day in our little car. And <laughs> that, yeah. So you, you mentioned fishing and farms. Yeah. Are there indigenous people who live on this land? Who, who've been um, there for I, I don't know what you call indigenous. Anymore. Well, pe people who have been around for a very long time. There are people that have been around for a very long time. But you got to realize this is a very heterogeneous society. I, I grew up um, with sort of a reverse prejudice. When I was a freshman here at CU, I was in my room in Baker Hall, snow on the ground, and these two Japanese guys were going by. I said, hey, how's it? And I said, no. Oh. I said, hey, what's the matter? Now you, you're not from Hawaii. No, we're from Denver. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I thought all the Japanese guys were from Hawaii. That's because when, when they... You know, Hawaii what used to be an agrarian society. And they first brought in 40,000 Portuguese. Portuguese mostly to handle the cattle. Captain Vancouver gave Kamehameha the first a couple of six head of cattle and they multiplied and Kamehameha put a copper on them so he couldn't kill the cattle and then cattle were eating everything. So they brought in these Portuguese to handle the cattle and they brought in some other vaqueros and such. And then, then they brought in 60,000 Chinese. And there was work on the pineapple, you know, when, sugar cane. What, when sugar was this? Cane. And then they brought in 180,000 Japanese. That was after World War II? 
Uh, that was before World War II. Before yeah. yeah. The, the last migration was still before World War II were 40,000 Filipinos. So it's it's a totally mixed society. I mean, <laughs> and my I went to a, a very small uh, high school, a laboratory school it's called, connected to the university, and they tried to keep the population, uh, you know, to reflect the population of the island. Mm -hmm. So it was mostly Japanese, <laughs> and uh, but we had everything, <laughs> you know, and. and so many of the people there are chop suey themselves. I mean, you know, they're all mixed up. They've got Hawaiian. Well, my brother was married to a gal who was probably a good percentage Hawaiian, maybe 30 or 30 something percent. But her dad, Larry Wong, he, he was chop suey, he had everything in him, you know, European, French, German, Irish and uh, all sorts of stuff and so his boys <laughs> would have a good chunk of wine in them as well and big wine boys um but they've got everything and they've they've done their dna stuff and so we, we've had fun with, with their dna but you know <clears throat> mine's pretty anglo-saxon um, my parents my my dad's from victoria british columbia and my mother's from uh Logan, Utah. How did, how did they get to Hawaii? <laughs> well, my dad, when he was 19 years old, uh, yeah, which was 1918, he uh, was told to go to a warm climate for a vacation. So he didn't go to California or Mexico or anywhere. He went to Honolulu. Mm -hmm. And he ran out of money, so he worked for a couple of years. He went back to British Columbia. But in two months, he said, oh, I'm going back. He went back to Honolulu. He says, I'm not going anywhere. And he died there at 94. So he wasn't. My mother, she got a degree in home economics from <clears throat> Utah State. And Hawaiian Electric hired 10 home economists to teach the women how to cook on electric stoves because they were cooking on wood stoves. There's, there's not very much wood in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And what there is, the amount of heat. So, yeah, that's how they got. And I don't know, they never really told me, but they were sort of the gay, the, the fun society. They were the tennis club and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But and, and my dad used to do crazy things. He, the salesman used to have races around Oahu and <laughs> at night and their rickety rickety cars and, and I mean we're talking twenties, thirties. All right, let's thank Bill for an interesting. <laughs>